let's talk a little bit about the traditional sales process. And most people know what the traditional sales process is. You've seen it, you've heard it, you've been a part of the traditional sales process at some point in your life. So let's let's break it down. It's five steps to the traditional sales process. Here they are. Usually step one of the traditional sales process is qualifying the buyer. Step two, features and benefits. Step three, questions from the buyer. Step four, the close. And step five is the post-close follow-up. All right, so let's let's add some uh, some color to this picture. Let's let's walk through a scenario. So let's say you walk into a Best Buy, and you're looking to buy a TV, and so when you walk into the Best Buy, someone is a salesperson that you perceive as a salesperson. They walk up to you and they say, "Hey, welcome to Best Buy. Can I help you? How can I help you?" That is them qualifying you as a buyer. The reason that step is usually necessary is because they want to make sure that you're in the right place. So Best Buy is known for electronics. And let's say if you walk into Best Buy and you say like, hey, I'm looking to buy a hamburger, salesperson probably tell you like, hey, we don't sell hamburgers here. You're in the wrong store. And so usually when a person asks, can I help you, it's usually to qualify you, to make sure one, that you're in the right place, that they can help you. And two, that you hopefully have money to spend in this place. And so you say, I'm looking to buy a TV. And so usually what step two of the traditional sales process looks like is the features and benefits part is now the salesperson walks you over to the TV section and they start to vomit to you all of the features and the benefits that come with TV. So they're like, hey, this is a 40 inch TV. This is a 50 inch TV. This TV is a flat TV. This TV comes in 4K. I mean, they just go and vomit all of the features and benefits of the TV to you as the buyer. Step three is questions from the buyer. So then after they get done vomiting the features and the benefits of the TV, you then ask them questions. You're like, all right, well, okay, I got the features and the benefits, but um, does it have uh, Apple TV attached to it? Am I able to project my computer screen onto uh, the TV as well? You then as the buyer get to ask the salesperson the question. Hopefully they're able to answer your question. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. Step four is then the close. So after they get done answering your questions, they then say, all right, well, which TV do you want? You tell them the TV and then they walk you over to the register and then they proceed to say like, hey, you can get this TV for, you know, 12 easy payments of $49.99 with our Best Buy card. Or they then say like, hey, do you want to, we want to upsell you? Do you want the insurance that comes along with this? And then step five, the notorious step five is the post-close follow-up. So that happens whether you buy the TV or not. But if you do buy the TV, what the post-close follow-up looks like is that you get an email saying, hey, we appreciate you for buying a TV from Best Buy. Welcome to the Best Buy family. We look forward to you being a customer again. And... Uh, we hope that you enjoy your TV is what a successful post close follow up looks like. Or if you don't buy the TV, you get an email in anyway that says like, oh man, we sorry that you we missed you. Here we have this 10% rebate. Please come buy this TV. That is what the post close follow up looks like. Have you been a part of the traditional sales process? And usually most people are like, yeah, I know what this looks like. So now that you know what the traditional sales process is, and now that you understand you've been a part of the traditional sales process, I need you to promise me that you will never use the traditional sales process. I mean, never use this thing ever, 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 ever. And here's why. So I mentioned like, you know, when you walk into a store, usually the traditional sales process is qualifying the buyer. It starts with these four words. Can I help you? It's the simplest qualification process ever. Can I help you? And when you walk into the store and somebody that you perceive as a salesperson says, can I help you? What are you most likely gonna say? I'm just shopping around. And the reason why is because nobody likes to be sold. We don't like to be sold. I don't wanna be upsold. I don't wanna be cross-sold. And we live in the age of technology. So half the time, I've already done the research anyway. If I'm if I'm walking into a Best Buy, I know what type of TV I'm looking for. I know how much I'm willing to spend. I don't want anybody to waste my time. And at the end of the day, again, I don't like to be sold. Majority of people don't like to be sold. I put my defenses up. Can I help you with qualifying the buyer is the easiest way for you to get shot down. But here's the reality though. 
Did you know that majority of people, when they go into the interview, you're using a traditional sales process? More than 80% of people when they interview use a traditional sales process. So let's, let's break it down to you. Here's what the traditional sales process looks like at the traditional interview. Step one, qualifying the buyer usually looks like a person saying, hey, I'm looking to speak to the recruiter or hiring manager. I'm looking for a person that, that's qualified to make a decision. Can I speak to the recruiter or hiring manager? That is step one, qualifying the buyer. Step two is the features and benefits. And so you get to an interview, finally make it to an interview. And step two is that you start to vomit all of the adjectives off your resume, all the features and benefits. So the, the recruiter or hiring manager asks you, uh, man, tell me about yourself. What brings you here? And this is what it usually sounds like. You then go on a, on a tangent and you start to say, uh, well, you know, I'm a, I'm a funny guy. I'm self-confident. I have a lot of enthusiasm. Uh, I'm a self-starter. I'm ambitious. Uh, I work hard. I got a degree in, in mathematics. I also have a degree in, in science. I also graduated top of my class. Uh, I'm punctual. I am, uh, I'm coachable. I'm a natural leader. I mean, people then start to vomit all of the features features and benefits off their resume, all of the adjectives to describe them is what the features and the benefit part look like in step two. And then clearly in step three, what happens is the interviewer then asks you questions because clearly at the interview, the interviewer is the buyer, you're the seller. And so now this seller has questions for you. And so in step three, they ask you questions like, oh, tell me about a time you had to hit a goal. Tell me about a time you failed at something. Tell me about a time this, tell me about a time that. And then after they ask you questions as the buyer, step four is the close. So then you then attempt to close yourself at the interview by asking questions like, where is there anything that prevents me from getting this job? Or what could I have done to be a little bit more successful? Or my favorite close at the interview is, uh, when can I start? And then you get to step five, which is the post-close email which at in the typical interview process is that you send that uh, old notorious thank you email that says i oh, appreciate you so much for your time i thank you so much for considering me again i i, I love the office environment i look forward to working with you in the future is what the post close email sounds like at the interview and unfortunately most people also get the post close email from the company which usually sounds like this well, although we liked you as a candidate, we've interviewed so many other people and uh, we've decided to go with a, uh, a different candidate that suits the position, but we really liked you though. But <laughs> we liked you. You were great, but we gonna pass on it. At least that's how I felt. We, we straight, we good. Good luck though, you were strong. And honestly, if you're using the traditional sales process at the interview, they lying to you in that post-closed email. They should have told you, oh, you suck and we'll never hire you a day in your life. It would have probably suited you better uh, if they would have said that. But majority of the time, you get hit with the courtesy email that says, oh, you're not a good fit or we went with a stronger candidate. But the reality is, is that if you're using a traditional sales process at the interview, well, a typical interview equals typical responses. Did this resonate with anybody? Have you done the traditional sales process at the interview? Well, I'm glad that everybody has now admitted that they suck at interviews and look forward to part two, how to not suck anymore. That's coming in part two.